later once we get on a, a really steep, narrow ridge that we're traveling up that uh, things might be uh, quite different. It is about to get very steep looking at this topo map. Mm -hmm. Probably got a mushroom coral. Yeah, Ooh. there's a little bit of a steep climb starting at waypoint three up to waypoint four, and then we get up to a really narrow, skinny ridge that all of us kind of thought way, looked really interesting uh, yeah. during dive planning yeah. last night. Uh, the seamount is not ridge-like or a guillo or even conical. So we have yet another uh, uh, kind of distinct morphology here. It's got uh, uh, four or five really well-developed uh, rift zones, and uh, it was actually reminding me of a sea star last night when we were looking at the map. Mm -hmm. um, some of our other uh, dive planning team thought it looks like a, like a maple leaf. So. Oh, a lot like Patrick. I can see it. A lot like Patrick. Go check out that sponge hiding out. On I know. Right I was just looking at it. It's so cool. It's got an interesting morphology, but I don't know if that's because it's um, actually, you know, that's like the normal shape that it takes, or if it's just, uh, you know, trying to. It's just like if hanging it's just off the rock. Off of the rock, yeah. Looks a little like a pitcher plant. Mm hmm. Mm. I've noticed several of these sponges kind of remind me of pitcher plants. They really bases. do, yeah. Yeah, yeah those cup-shaped sponges, and that's, that helps them like feed and, in some cases, generate their own little water currents locally, right? Um, yeah. Oh, this is a cool anthem. That's a true Ooh. anthemastus, I think. It's got the longer it? stalk. That is a that is a large one too. Oh, speaking of large, yeah, you turn is. the lasers on. Oh yeah! Wow. Yeah, we've been seeing mostly pseudoanthemastis, right? Right, the much shorter version, mm -hmm. um, which is, it's convenient that it's so easy to tell apart because one, basically you have like very little stalk and then you have that head full of um, polyps and then this one you have, you know, you, you've got a nice little stalk that it comes up over and then the polyps feed there, so. Yeah, so That's easy, even a geologist can do it. <laughs> <laughs> a remarkable geologist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and about those sponges, um, you know, I remembered that they have, um, sponges have coanocytes, which are like these collar cells that I believe have flagellum. Oh yeah, and, um, and so they're actually able to create their own currents um, by using those flagella, um, which are very small, like, whip-like structures. Um, and so they're able to create currents that then draw um, water into the central cavity of the sponge. Wow. I believe that's, I believe, yeah. So it's, um, sponges, sponges are, are cool. actually more interesting than one might think. Mm -hmm. They have some cool, some very okay. cool adaptations. All right, zoom out. Yeah, beautiful shot. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Looking at a mushroom coral while talking about sponges. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can do two things at once. <laughs> <laughs> Val, I remember speaking with uh, expedition co-expedition lead Daniel Wagner uh, about a canyon wall that we would be kind of traversing along mm -hmm. at some point along this dive. Is is this sort of steep face in front of us, that, that canyon wall that's coming up shortly? Tough to, tough to tell. We're just getting on. Yeah, so we started off in the middle of uh, this canyon and went up the wall, and now we're kind of uh, traversing yeah, up the, the bridge, top of the just outside of it. We're up on top. Yeah, so if we were to turn left and look down, that blue abyss that we'd be staring into is uh, the canyon. Got it. It's much steeper on the Hola. other side. Bless you. Mm. So now for the rest of the dive, we're, we're kind of doing um, more of the, the ridge line. Yeah. Great. Yeah, we all decided we were curious what was at the bottom of the canyon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, I was asleep, so I totally missed it. There was a lot of sediment. But oh, that, that, that I did believe. Get a couple rock samples. Yeah, or usually, at least one I saw. Usually with the canyons like this, uh, well, not usually, I mean, I'm working on a limited data set here. Um, but towards towards the bottom of these uh, submarine canyons, uh, you do tend to get a lot of sediment that piles up, and uh, some rocks. Not often a huge amount of other things, but maybe some uh, some sea pens since that's a, a sedimented area. 
They did like see several uh, acorn worms. Which yeah, I don't acorn think we, worms. I don't okay. think we had seen that before, makes sense but. actually. Um, canyons can host really dense communities of um, both epibenthic and in fauna, mm -hmm. um, and so you can because th they basically kind of you know um, sort of filter and um, they draw down sort of like a lot of the sediment and. Um, you know, anything that's falling within the area of that canyon will then kind of move into and be filtered down. Oh, it's another yeah, it looks like we have a fish. We have a fish and a dike. Mm. Another dike up here. So we are seeing part of the intrusive sequence uh, in this rift zone too. So yeah, this is definitely a canyon that Come has in. a... a uh, that uh, formed Alasaur. secondary Alasaur, to... Yeah the uh, volcanic platform. Oh, interesting. So yeah. we're, we're, hey, I, I love a good peak inside a volcanic plumbing system. So. We know Fantastic. You do. I am happy right like now. another halosaur, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it does, doesn't it? It's got that yeah. face. It's got the face and the tail and then the, um, the triangular sort of um, dorsal fin. So, um, But what I was saying about canyons, actually, they can have some of the highest biomass of like non-chemosynthetic um, Organisms in the really? world, yes. Like even compared to like the top of a geo. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. I mean, in That's comparison amazing. to a lot of these areas, it's pretty wild. Um, but some of it's not what you can see. A lot of it's also, um, you know, there's fishes that move in, and mm -hmm. there's crabs, but there's also anemones and the sea pens that you're talking about. Um, um, but also there's a high diversity of worms, so you can also track it in like Lebensbrunn, which is li I think it's literally like signs of life. Um, and it's just trails that organisms leave on the seafloor, on the right. soft sediment. Um, it's pretty interesting. So it yeah, because a lot of them kind of, a lot of these we may never see otherwise, just because they're hiding out in the in uh, buried in the sediment, right? Correct, correct. So there's a lot of life in some of those areas. It's just more difficult to see than you know the the communities that make themselves very well known on the outside of the mm -hmm. the sediment. Um, mm -hmm. Cool. What did you call it? Leven? Liebenspern? Le Liebenspern. Yeah. Sure. I'll, I'll look it up for the exact Liebenspern, um, for the exact definition. Oh, I should type in definition because... While Virginia is looking that up, just a quick shout out to uh, a dear friend. Uh, Judith watching from Shanghai, China, and uh, Judith uh, is a teacher. Help, helped me learn how to scuba dive when we were both living in Curacao many mm. years ago. And, uh, I'm glad you're watching, Judith. Hi, Judith. Yeah, Wonderful. thanks for joining us. Aloha. 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 Yeah. Um, so I did look up the definition of Liebenspern, um, and it is German for life traces. <laughs> um, I love that article headline you got up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> more than just a fancy word for deep sea poo. Science. <laughs> um, so is, is that a scientist's name? Yeah. It's, we'll just say yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, oh, no. I mean, that is, it is, it's actually, like, it is literally German for yeah. um, life traces. So it's, oh, okay. it's no one's name. It's just, it's a German it's a word. It's a German word. Okay. Um, and they've, they've been using this um, to sort of, to sort of uh, see what organisms might be nearby but not visible to the cameras. Because, you know, in, um, in faunal sediment, that's meaning um, organisms, or in faunal organisms, that's organisms that live within the sediment um, versus, um, you know, at, like these sponges here, like there's a sponge on screen and that's living Did on hard mean? substrate, so it can't actually move into the se sediment itself. Um, it has to it survives um, on the, the seafloor, mm -hmm. but above it, right? But, so but, yeah. it, but there's traces of sponge, all the dead bits. There are, there are. So is it, that's mm -hmm. Liebenspern? Um, you know, I think Liebenspern particularly talks Just about the them. movement of life um, uh, what about on the like seafloor. What about fecal pellets? I mean, that would be part of it. Um, that's how we know holothurians have been exactly. there. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, honestly, a lot of it is tracking organisms through how they are feeding on the seafloor. So you can you can trace um, the acorn worms, 
uh, sea cucumbers based on their feeding trace it, like feeding tracks. Um, urchins leave a very mm. distinct um, pattern on the seafloor, and there's always there's you know an, a numerous number of worms that I'm unfamiliar with. Yeah, so. like the sunworms that leave a sun pattern. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Fish also are known to leave leave in sperm. I just re um, saw a paper on. Um, McCrudes, some of the, the grenadiers that we see, or rat tails, um, and, and the traces that they leave on some of the soft sediments. So it can be anything from very small to very large. So I'm trying to look up what the trackway for an urchin looks like, and I, I'm getting hits for Mount Urchin Track. Mm. So that's apparently a hiking place in New Zealand. Ah, ah yes. Oh, well, let's go. Cool. So we yeah. often see uh, places in the sediment where whales have come down and, I they, was and just they dig a trench. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I think beaked whales? Yeah. They, that's part of their, like, feeding strategy um, is... Oh, they're filtering things out of the sand? Out of the sand, yes. What? Yeah, so they will just, like, whales are awesome. grab a whole bunch of the seafloor. Um, but it's actually really good because that creates... Um, you know, if you think about the sand on the seafloor, it's usually pretty uh -huh. flat. Mm -hmm. um, and so they create these divots, and so they're actually creating sort of like uh -huh. micro habitats. Building habitat, yeah. You know, it's, Smart it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Gonna make more food for them later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. It looks like we're getting into some slightly different. Um, yeah, I think we just corals. got into. Uh, <coughs> Very much in place sequence. You can see all sorts of linear features in this rock face that uh, look like a series of dikes that have uh, intruded through here. Mm -hmm. it's volcanic like it's plumbing, I'm getting, uh, getting Dr. Val more and more interested. Good job. Yeah, as <laughs> always. <laughs> it also makes a good place for uh, uh, some life to set up shop. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, this is a steep feature you can see in Atalanta that we're what we're looking at. It almost looks like a cartoon of uh, what we're actually seeing, to be honest. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. It's a, a very impressive feature we're on. Oh no, this is interesting. Oh, the yeah. Would we be able to get a zoom on this pink yeah. coral here? Zoom in. But not the dead Walteria, right? No. Yeah, <laughs> they're all over. <laughs> We see lots of those. We do. Those probably stick around for quite a long time, right? Yes. Probably, yeah. Looks like there's a dead sponge stalk right behind it. Oh, you're right. You're oh, right. We have a friend, two I friends how here. Old that is. Oh, yeah, we've got some squat lobsters. Yeah, no idea how old that might be. We sponge them? Yeah. Oh, no idea. Yeah. You think it would be thousands of years? I don't know if um, how fast or if they degrade very quickly. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. that is not a clue. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So what I'm seeing is at the ends of some of these polyps, there's up to five, three to five polyps at the end of these um, these branches. Yeah, we're going to have to yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. All here. right. Sounds good. Thanks for the Zoom. Thank yeah, you. I appreciate it. Did I have my Are we still moving? Yeah, we are. Um, yeah. Like 0.1 knots. So, but yeah, we are heading right for that like cliff facing. We're not facing. looking over the side either, so better get clipping. Yeah. Has the current been a factor at all on this dive that we know well, of? We've only been here a few minutes. But yeah. Here it hasn't so far. I don't. I have. Okay. I didn't hear any messages that it was. So one, th they okay, did good. have the DP go out on them at one point. Right. Um, yeah. So oh hopefully that boy. won't happen to yeah, us. Yeah. Like right <laughs> yeah. now. I know. Not it would be a bad time right now. <laughs> well, one of the advantages of uh, going up this knife ridge that we're going to transition into is, yeah, just in case current is a problem, it should be pretty simple to drop down on uh, uh, whatever the lee side is. You were so. hearing uh, Catalina and Robert talking about our dynamic positioning system and the way that we keep all of our vessels of exploration, the exploration vessel Nautilus, as well as Atalanta 
and Hercules, which are tethered to us, but uh, a mile and a half below us on top of the seamount. How we keep those all moving in coordination with one another. Catalina communicating with the bridge um, and with Robert and with Zach. Working as an awesome front row team, as well as with Amber, our video engineer, who's bringing us these amazing shots. I think this might be a, is probably a good time to change our heading because we're right on top of, well, we're almost right on top, I guess. Hopefully. Um, it, do you yeah, it looks like the edge isn't as sharp, so we're, you know, yeah. we're getting to the top. So this is a case where a submarine's better than an ROV because mm -hmm. if an ROV is up on a cliff face like this, you have the, the wire running down the whole cliff face. And mm -hmm. if the ship mm -hmm. were to that take off towards the cliff, <laughs> you get dragged right into it. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. So a submarine can just drift right on up, you know? It's not Would it be tied possible to get a zoom on this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is Are there are there locations where an ROV might be better than, an, than a sub, though? Or is in, it? In most cases, it is, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> is that just a safety situation, or? The <clears throat> It's just the submarine's a really big vehicle, mm. you know? Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, it's like driving a little Ferrari and an ROV and a, and a sub's <laughs> like driving a Big Mac truck, so. Okay. <laughs> yeah. A lot of work <laughs> to deal with, got it. <laughs> awesome. Is this full zoom by any chance? Can you zoom in? Oh, fantastic. That was no zoom. <laughs> Amazing. Minimum zoom. <laughs> wow. Look at this zoom. I'm liking this maximum zoom, though. This, this is great. Wow. Wow, pretty. It's a beautiful bamboo. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> All good. This is what happens when you go in for maximum zoom. <laughs> <laughs> this is, you know. This yeah, is I get it. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Uh, this is a interesting branching pattern for. Uh, it's actually when you zoom in like that, people tend to drive the ROV away. Oh they'll, yeah. They'll just, just the way it is, you drive, you'll drive away from it. And you have to like consciously think about driving into it. Makes oh, because your brain yeah. is telling you you're getting too close. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't. Yeah, That's it's funny. just like a natural thing that to do that. It would be yeah. it would be great to put a little helmet on, on you, Robert, and see what's going on in that <laughs> mind of yours. We should uh, you don't want to go there. We should see that. <laughs> That's awesome. Could you pan up a little bit too? I wanna see if I can't um, the branching's really dense at the bottom. I'm trying to see it looks like it's look really, at really dense at the top <laughs> too. <laughs> there is actually quite a lot of interest in trying to understand the cognitive neuroscience of uh, traditional wayfinders and navigators, and uh, I could imagine we'd find some interesting things looking into the into the neural activity and the and the brain activity of ROV pilots and navigators as well. So I think people that are good at playing like um, dungeon kind of video games are good at doing this because they mm. they have good spatial sense I think yeah yeah you heard it here if you like dungeon games like Skyrim. come intern with us <laughs> that was my well. choice. always looking for great ROV interns yes. and uh, we check out those opportunities I believe applications might be open for next expedition season if they're not open yet they'll be open soon and yeah let's go mm. double check that and uh, We'd love to have you out on board the Nautilus with us. So these are some stunning images. They really are. Okay, gotta get moving. Awesome, Sounds thank you good. so much. I appreciate it. Uh, Kukui, um, what does our sample collection look like so far? We have a rock. Oh, <laughs> <so> <laughs> what, what depth is that at? Is it, is it pushed in right now? No, it's, it's all the way out. Oh, yeah, okay. Robert, do we think, is this an, I a to good spot to start one, heading up like the stationary. ridge, like basically <laughs> this way? Do you want to get up higher? Or? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look quite as starkly. Yeah, I mean, it looks like there's still more down yeah. to the southward. Okay. Right. Thank you. So would you would you rather get up a little higher first? I think 
think that's <coughs> beyond my pay scale. Beyond your pay scale. <laughs> 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 What do you want to do? Um, I'd like to go up the ridge if we can. All right. I think we can do that. I mean, looking at the t uh, topo map, I feel like we should be okay. We, sh we should be near the top. Yeah. I mean, it's not as sharp an edge. We can see some yeah. things that, you know, especially off to the north. So maybe just come right. up a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. You want to go like along the top edge? Is that the plan? Yeah. Where all the goodies are? Yeah, hopefully. All right, so looking at the Nautilus Live website, um, applications for next season will open uh, very soon, early October. Awesome. So, yeah, this includes uh, like science and engineering, internships, student opportunities, mm -hmm. so science communication. Right, Absolutely. and you don't have to have like a degree to get into some of these internships and positions, correct? They're open correct. for a lot of a lot of individuals. So you know, yeah. anyone who's listening right now could probably apply. Oh yeah, if and you also, have a real interest. Yeah, there's internship opportunities for video engineering as well. So. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. ROV, video. We uh, have uh, former, communication. Yeah. former video engineering intern, master on the controls, yeah. lead video engineer at this expedition. Yay. So there's a really cool journey. We you have can actually be overqualified, overeducated to be an ROV pilot. Because, mm -hmm. like, Huey has a policy where they will not hire a PhD into a, into a, uh, you know, like a lower tier engineer level. Is that right? Why? Because it was to protect PhDs from being underpaid. Oh. Mm. <laughs> right, that's nice well, that, means, that means so I'm ineligible. <laughs> I know, I know, I get it. But you probably don't want me driving that. an ROV anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's turns out there's quite a few PhDs that would like to be driving ROVs. So. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, no, actually, I don't blame them. Yeah. I know, I know, reality? I know of at least uh, one person who has done that. Uh, yeah. Maybe not through this internship program, but got, an R got a PhD in moved into um, uh, navigating and, and piloting the ROV and also working on the ROV and the systems there too. But I believe there are a couple of Nautilus pilots um, who have PhDs. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it would be a lot of fun in all reality to fly an ROV, but um, <laughs> they, they keep putting me in the back row. <laughs> well, OET doesn't have that policy. So. Yeah. Oh, they nice. tend to bring people in as, as contractors anyway. Yeah. It's great, all the uh, diversity of, of uh, life experience and academic backgrounds and uh, just incredible. The team that gets built here at Ocean Exploration Trust, so Amber's exactly right, Virginia was exactly right. It's, mm -hmm. it's great to, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to see your application. We want to know how you'd like to be connected to this exploration. And so check out nautiluslive.org for more information and what a good spot. Can we get a zoom on some team. of these really thin, tall sticks here? Okay. We've seen a couple of them. Is the question bamboo or not bamboo? Mm, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I, or just what? Just, just what? They look different from uh, yesterday's bamboos. The, yes. the single stocked ones were uh, more helical, spirally. Yes, these are these are much smaller, um, or thinner, I think. Um, there's I think there's so. a number of different bamboos. Um, you zoom in. Yeah, that's something there too. Yeah, and we've seen we've seen a couple uh, that oop, have actually not. been black corals um, that Didn't have get that sort of bite on it there. unbranched uh, shape previously, and I know that they there are some um, unbranched primnoids as well. Cool. So. Oh, shrimp. No. Or squid. Shrimp. I think it was a little shrimp. Little shrimp. Yeah. Just doing little shrimp things. Mm -hmm. Living a little shrimp life. Oh, oh and there's a Walteria there too. I didn't see that at oh, first. Yeah. yeah, it's one of the things with the, these sedimented areas. There's a lot of organisms that just kind of seem to blend in with the background a little bit. Yeah. We actually have an Ololo Hawaii word for video engineer filmmaker. Oh. Yeah. 
It's a little longer, but it's Anekinia Pai Vikio. Anekinia Pai Vikio. Oh, Anekinia. Yeah. What was before Vikio? Uh, pai. Pai. Pai Vikio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Right. So that's a position on board. So with this amazing zoom, I think I'm actually able to see the sclerites those lines on that coral. Okay, are you talking about the little... The little lines on the polyps. Okay, yeah, you're, I'm definitely seeing those too. I do not see any banding though, so this right. is not a bamboo. So that combination makes me think that this is a primnoid. Primnoid, oh, unbranched primnoid? Unbranched primnoid, yes. That's would be, cool. Would you be able to um, pan, yeah, the, the length of it? To verify. Oh, awesome. <coughs> that's as far as they can go. Okay, great. Moving. No, that's awesome. That is so fantastic. I do appreciate it. Yeah. Awesome. It's interesting. There's some white dots, dots on the polyps too that I'm. Yeah, I was wondering if that was like those are <coughs> food they caught, or is that like what, something retracted or unknown? Or yeah, yeah it could I be something know. completely different. Yeah. So, can we look at the um, the base a little bit too? We've got the time. Awesome. It's a very compact base. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, that's another. That was another thing that I was looking at. Great. Well, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Wonderful zoom. I, I, I am voting for unbranched from Noah. Fantastic. Which is actually really interesting because we we see a lot of uh, bamboos at this depth. But maybe I'm wrong. Is it more frequent that we see the branched primnoids? Oh, yes. We see a lot of branched primnoids. Um, I'm not sure about what depth are we at. We're about 2,000 meters, so uh, it's a little, it's a touch deeper than my, uh, than what I'm most familiar with. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty interesting. So, Robert, it looks like we're starting to head back down over the other side of the ridge, at least according to the map and high path. This is, this yeah. is different. <laughs> I mean, it looks like we're overshooting, you know? it's I don't know. I don't know if the bathymetry just didn't pick this all up. I think it's probably just too fine scale here to yeah. be picked yeah. up by that. So. Uh, it just, we, we probably should start heading up towards waypoint three at this point. Are you okay with that? Uh, okay. We have to head up this way, because if not, we're just going to keep shooting out that way. Well, I would argue that this says that that's not what we're doing. But yeah, no, I mean, I see it's not what we're doing. Yeah, the bathymetry definitely did not pick this up. It, so, probably yeah, just too fine a scale. Yeah, it looks like we should be heading back down so or looking right, down Right, yeah. That's weird. So maybe this is just, we just have a little bit more to go. Um, Hopefully, yeah. Oh. Okay. Thank or this you. is a little pocket like canyon or something. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, this is definitely still... Well, what was the heading you wanted to go at? Like uh, we need to go like 160-ish. 160. Yeah. I mean, I think it would still be along the edge of this thing, so we could probably do that. I just, I would be crabbing. Okay. Um, would you rather not do that? Would you rather just I'll climb a little bit more? I mean, you can crab if you want to crab. <laughs> All right, let's try it out and see how it goes. And also, to be fair, uh, <coughs> we, this is uh, not our mapping. <laughs> Wait, what's that? Uh, this this is a previously oh, mapped yeah, seamount, right. so I have no right. idea what the uh, what the resolution is on this multi beam. That's the problem. I think they were thinking 100 meters. 100 meters? Well, I mean, we usually go with like 75, so yeah. Yeah. yeah, that could explain a couple things if we're at 75 to 100 meters resolution. Yeah. Okie dokie, I think we solved the mystery, but <laughs> we still don't know where the top is. <laughs> well, it's funny because our maps are usually too. So, do we want to find the top then? Uh, probably wouldn't hurt, but I, I also agree with Catalina's decision that we should start moving uh, 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 upward toward uh, waypoint three. Yeah, maybe we can 
Maybe we can do a compromise. Combo. Yeah. combo move. <laughs> <laughs> as long as there's All not right. a c -c -c combo breaker. <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing the worst, stupidest jokes this morning. <laughs> I love it, Dr. Velvet. It Keep them coming. Yeah, we all got it? combo moves up our sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> it's day 19. <laughs> so I oh, think, that uh, too. <laughs> is it allowed or encouraged? Uh, it's encouraged, encouraged. <laughs> actually. Oh, it's yes. keeping us more sane, actually, I believe. <laughs> we have a healthy balance on board. Yes. What yeah. is that up top? The what? That line. Oh, it's just a coral. It's, it's a, a coral? dead, dead s skeleton. Oh, it sure is, yeah. Just like weird. Skeletal <laughs> remains. Oh, yeah. Looks like a fallen, um... Museum? Fallen. Primnoid, maybe? Actually, I'm thinking maybe, yeah. Looks like a bamboo to me. There's a couple black lines, I think, but I'm not sure if it's just something that's on it or if it's actually... A oh no, that's like a single black band on it. Yeah, yeah. It or also seems a little bit thicker than the other corals we've been okay. seeing here. So, um, yeah. Thank you for that. So fallen, fallen bamboo coral. Speaking of uh, ROV pilots, just want to uh, one of, one of the people I love learning about and, and learning from is our Nautilus ROV pilot, Jessica Sandoval. Oh, yeah. Postdoc, and PhD, um, and... Uh, she's everything. Study, yeah, everything. <laughs> yeah. But she's, uh, as, a, as a biomimic, fun to follow Jessica. She's actually been studying peduncle, sea pen peduncle, and, and uh, trying to develop new ROV engineering techniques for suction and sampling based oh, cool. on the based on the mechanisms of those that's from my understanding yeah she was on my watch last year and uh she's awesome yeah 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 so we were interns uh, together the, oh, wow. the first year very yeah, cool so. all right yeah. this looks topish it does look topish and hey look a dense a dense community we haven't uh, seen one of those in a while <laughs> what are these what are these uh, it looks like we've got more of those um, unbranched from nodes. Glad I got a zoom on it. And um, some Walteria sponges. We've got some fan corals. Um, if it would be possible, I'd love to get a zoom on this slightly yellow coral. Um, oh, yeah, no, this is exciting. We're seeing some different. Um, hey, uh, zoom in. Actually, what we're seeing is a lot of the same corals that we've been seeing, just at a higher density than what we've been seeing. Which is always interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, is this another? Oh, this is another. Um, I think it's a branching. It's another branching bamboo. Um, I'm trying to see if it's nodal. It looks like some of them are nodal. Branching. Two different corals there. Yeah, it looks like it. I think there's like a oh, yeah, heavy corallium or something behind it. Behind it. Yeah. Something up there too. Yeah, it looks like a dead sponge with stolen with friends on it. things growing on it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's excellent. It's a very, uh, very long Walteria. Yeah. Ah, yeah, there's uh, some of your uh, poo traces. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for that zoom. Yeah, thank you. Interesting too, well, the, the branches of that. Um, <laughs> Should we take a miskin downward. here? Um, we haven't taken one yet. Would it? Yeah, Robert, would it be possible to take a miskin here? Uh, yeah. Are we still moving? <laughs> the um, slowly. We think, think we'd have a minute. Worries. Yeah, we can also yeah. um, do it somewhere else too, where there's more of a foothold. We got well, we don't need we to get planted distance. to do a Niskin if I can, if I have a good bottom lock, which I currently don't. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, well, let's, yeah. let's stand by for a minute. <laughs> but, uh, you might be able to shove yourself to the right. Maybe. Yeah. They want to be right on in amongst the goodies, though. Oh. The Ideally, yes, we do want to be. Okay. Yeah. Um, we've got... Uh, 
Uh, it looks like the the sediment that you can see falling, the snow, is moving downward. Yep. Um, so not positive if we were. Yeah, with with this uh, DNA practice, I'm not positive how um, high the resolution is of the data. If if just yeah. being slightly to the right or to the left, you would still get the same information. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um. So we would really want to put the bottles right below where the, the community yeah. is, right? I think it does better than we than we imagine. Um, so, but yeah, like like this area I think would be great. Um, Sorry, I didn't see it. Where, where were you saying? Like, like, honestly, I think, I mean, how far, it, looking in Atalanta, we look actually pretty close. Yeah, yeah, we're within a few meters, so that yeah. should be okay. So that should be okay. Okay. So um, I think once we get like, what is it, 10, 20 meters above, we start to lose it. Is what I'm heard. not positive. Okay. Um, it is, yeah, I mean, you got the current coming down that's moving mm -hmm. a pretty good clip. So. Yeah, I would imagine it does also have to do with the current. But I think this is also something that they're trying to sort of pinpoint more is. Oh. How far away can you be to get the same information? I think uh, we may be stable enough here to do it. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Okay, okay. Yeah, let's let's give it a try then. And that's just processing protocol. I think I can see it in there oh, okay. enough to get it around. Okay. I'll go back over here then. I think. And Amber, can you uh, bump up the, the uh, light there? Oh, gotcha. That's my full. Do you have any porch lights you can turn on? Is the camera racked all the way back? Yeah, that's it. All the way. Okay. And what are we going for? Um, any bottle. Um, you want to start with number six or? Six it is. Do we have the camera up for yeah. that? Yeah, I'm about to right now. <coughs> oh, is the down light on? Maybe the down light's not on. Ooh, that light's actually pretty good. Yeah, it's looking a little dark. Oh, yeah, I'm full. There we go. <coughs> Thank you. And we got the rail in view. Yep. It looks weird. Yeah, it looks different. Why does it look different? I think someone messed with the lights. That's what it looks like. It just looks like it's brighter. Or someone just put the no, lights right on. No, the angle it. is different. Are we going to see six? Oh, maybe they did. Yeah. Okay. Oops. I need to make bigger balls. You slipped through the fingers there. <laughs> Sounds like the 3D printer's going to be busy. Maybe we don't have any colors left. Dan, oh, he printed a bunch of silly storage boxes. Oh, used to follow man. <laughs> <laughs> the, fight, the fight over the 3D printer continues. <laughs> Did you see it go? I, I cannot see it. I didn't see it either go. Look like I, I don't want to pull on it more. We will, we'll have to print another ball because it'll <laughs> be gone. <laughs> yeah, this new angle, oh. you can't see it even a whisper. Yeah. yeah. We'll just trust and verify when we bring it up. Yeah. 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 Well, it did fire yesterday, right? Or whenever the yeah. heck that was. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Some Mahalo Robert. Beautiful. Robert, what was uh, what was your path uh, those couple years ago when you were first training to uh, to be an ROV pilot uh, and submarine pilot? What was how how did you learn other than the Sears air compressor? That you <laughs> <think>? <laughs> um, <clears throat> my first job was at a radio station, actually. Oh, <laughs> oh wow! Sound engineer. What were you doing at the radio I was station? Remote producer. I was nice. 16 years old. I went wow. to the. Clippers and the Chargers games when they were in San Diego. 
Yeah. And I set up the microphones, and uh, yeah, I told the, the announcers when to go to commercial and stuff, so I was just on the phone to the station. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so we did the pre-game and post-game show in the parking lot of the stadium. So I was just, I was just kind of always into it. Like I said, when I, my dad bought me an electronics kit, and yep. I just dove head on into that. So, and our neighbor happened to be the, the owner of a couple of radio stations. And yeah, he got me a job there. That's nice. cool. That's Where to after long. radio, after? Uh, and I went in the Coast Guard. Okay. Oh, wow. That's a big change. Yeah. Well, I figured, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it looked exciting. So I got to go to America on an Whoa. icebreaker. That is oh, cool. that is cool. 19 years old. Wow. <laughs> that was like 2015? Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was deep freeze 80. <laughs> yeah. What was the sample number for that, Niskin? Uh, 081. 081, thanks. But anyway, I, I was the gunfire control technician in the Coast Guard, and they sent me to nine months of electronic school. Wow. So you work on the radars and computers for the guns, the big guns. So that's the white boots, right? Can you zoom in? Okay. And then uh, after I got out of the Coast Guard, I was working for defense contractors in San Diego. As a technician, I worked my way up to be an associate engineer and then an engineer. That's cool. Going to school at night. Oh, wow. And then I saw an ad in EE e. Times for Alvin Pilot. That's amazing. Ooh. And now there's uh, not anybody I'd rather have on board when uh, when stuff hits the fan and uh, and it <laughs> needs to be fixed. Uh, Robert, mm. Robert Waters will... Uh, Knows how to get the job done and, and yeah, uh, sure take does. care of all of us. The electronic stuff. I don't well. know the hydraulics, but <laughs> 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 I try and keep it that way. <laughs> totally fair. Yeah, you don't want to get stuck working down there. Yeah, that's right. That's the problem with learning some skill sets is uh, you learn them and then you end up doing that all the time for yeah, everybody. Yeah, you become too valuable, actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I've actually become the, the heavy equipment operator. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, the first thing I had to do when I showed up in Honolulu there was they had a they had to replace the satellite dish on the top of the mast. And mm. they started asking around who knew how to run a man lift and I was the only one that did. There you go. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Anything you still find yourself uh liking liking to learn now any new new skills or things that you're i know 3d printing must be relatively new because it hasn't really been around that long but but I'm, uh, I'm pretty fascinated with the whole ai thing yeah I started messing around with the stable diffusion yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's so they're saying that'll take jobs away you know like creative jobs right yeah but there's quite an art to like how do you make the prompt and you have to know art to be able to you know if you want to generate an image that has like a certain character to it right you have to be able to describe it so that's true prompt mm -hmm. engineering so is going to be yeah. a whole new field so you got to know what you're asking for yeah. right and yeah how do you do that if you don't understand art well that's the thing about uh about computers and programming in general too and it yeah. sounds like this applies to ai is uh, a computer is going to do exactly what you tell it to, but um, if you get something unexpected, that means you're just not telling it what you think you're telling it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. AI is throwing that a little bit, uh, it's kind of for a loop, uh, that concept, but it's uh, it definitely still applies. That, uh, sure does. Whatever we, however we're interacting with these generative AI algorithms, uh, the interaction matters. What we feed it, what we give it, um, what we share with it is going to is going to determine the outcome to a large degree. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, it's amazing to it's amazing to see what's uh, becoming possible, and also a fun conversation about, as always, just because it's possible does doesn't necessarily mean we should do it. But 
Yeah, it's an exciting time in AI. Not surprising, Robert, that you're uh, right in the mix on thinking about. So, yeah, I mean, as an electronic hobbyist, you know, early on, and thinking about what was available then compared to now, it's like, like, wow, you know, kids are really, they're blessed with some pretty incredible things they can work with, and, you know, it's, it's much more accessible. Absolutely. Okay. Are we moving? We are. Yeah. We're inching along. Right. I guess I need to move. <laughs> Down slope. Yeah. So. Uh, well, it's supposed to be along, along the ridge line here. Kind of crabbing oh. along the edge of it, like you said. Okay. We'll just wait. Yeah, I hope that uh, okay. young young people listening, if you're out there, um, recognize that there are still many different paths to getting to do incredible work, important work. Uh, some of them might involve school, never-ending school, uh, but many of them don't. Many of them you can get out in the world and uh, and start working and learning in a lot of different ways, growing your network and your skills. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, yeah, you don't have to have a degree to be an ROV pilot, but you do need to be have a lot of skills. That's you right. Know? Let me zoom in. You got to be very hands-on because you don't just fly them; you have to fix them. <laughs> That's yep. right. It's a big part of the job. <laughs> as yeah, soon as these ROVs are back on deck, it's uh, ROV teams at work uh, making sure they're ready to go for the next dive. Yeah, because we don't have anybody else out here to help us. It's, yeah, it's we're, we're on our own. It's the same pilots who are making sure that it's uh, flyable. And yep. the pilots and mechanics and all, all around engineers. Amazing. Mm-hmm. I'm one of those uh, purple mouth sea cucumbers. I think another snack to it. Yeah, another, I yeah I think you're right. Yeah. It's an elacta. Can you see that purple fairnix? But... Yeah, I think you're absolutely correct, Kukui. Yeah. Oh, I think we just uh, somehow fixed Asako's uh, posting issue. <laughs> Great. Nice. I, 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 I just was suggesting things. <laughs> think that, it, you know, the, the sort of the sort of the easy yeah, ones, but I wasn't sure if it was going to fix it. <laughs> All good. Thank you. So do you want to start coming this way? Because this so is the direction we're heading, is down this way. Yeah, so that's definitely down slope. As you heard us mention before, if you've been watching for a little while, there's um, uh, this map was not created yesterday by the team on board the Nautilus, but uh, created a handful of years ago uh, that we're using to create this dive plan. Wondering if there's uh, small adjustments and updates that Going need to be made. Well, there's, um, you know, when you're when you're mapping these areas, right? Like, think about it. We're at a depth of 2,000 meters. So you're 2,000 meters above the seafloor when you're again, sending little pings. Um, down to the seafloor to get information back. So one of the things that you miss are like some of these topographical changes that um, can be blocked um, from returning to the to the ship. Um, but also, you know, it, how f how frequently you send down those pings uh, can determine the resolution as well, and as well as the um, the, f the, fre the the frequency and the like wavelength. And so. There's a lot of there's many different factors that go into making these the the raw data right the sonar um, information that leaves and then comes back and so you know actually there's a large number of most of the bottom of the seafloor map, maps I would assume are in this you know 100 meter or above range um, and actually I think uh, you know anything below 200 meters is is not half bad, um, uh, you know, because what we get from satellite is, you know, 500 plus meters across. So we this is this is by far better than uh, what we would have had. Um, it's just, 
I think it's a it's a difficult um, it's a difficult task these making these maps um, and also I mean then there's also always the, the difficult task of using someone else's map not knowing exactly what settings they were using and how they put it together um, so yeah it's really making maps is actually exceptionally important we wouldn't be mm -hmm. here without a map um, you know it's uh, it's it's interesting it's really interesting uh, from what I understand, surface conditions also play a part in oh, your ability to collect accurate data from the sonar. And yeah, uh, if you're rocking all over the place, you're not going to be able to get that sonar ping back when it, you know, um, or in the same area. So it can you can create all sorts of what they call artifacts, um, false information in your in your data mm -hmm. um, due to that. So there is a cleaning process. Um, actually, Catalina was showing me the other day how they you know sort of clean some of the data but yeah it sounds it's a it's a difficult task yep good old ping editing mm -hmm. are you are you familiar with the ping editing i now? am familiar with the ping editing ah. uh, we uh we, we did this uh big dredge cruise in 2013 and uh, and, uh we had a couple of uh computers set up in one of the labs uh to do that um and we we just kind of gave all of the students and everybody else a crash course in uh, you know, how to grab a stack of uh, multi-beam lines and mm. look for clear outliers, especially out at the margins where the data will tend to be a little noisier. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you just go through yeah. like 10 or 20 at a time. Yeah, I'm uh, at the bottom too. Right get rid of the bad pings, mm -hmm. save it, well, and uh, then you end up with actually uh, a clean stack. Nice. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little tedious, but um, it's well worth the effort. Yeah, we're going down slope. Okay, I'll stop right here for a moment then. Because I keep going and then I'll hit bottom. Hmm. Well, I just got to quit driving down. This is a weird area to navigate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do we want to just kind of move uphill and see if we eventually catch up with the ridge? So we're yeah, going straight down the slope, this direction. Okay. So yeah. would you you want to head maybe in this way and see? Well, I think if if you're trying to get you're trying to get down here. We're trying to get down like here. here. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you can see the the walls. Yeah. There. Yeah. So. If yeah, we, and like if we keep going back to right east, up we're gonna go it. down the slope for sure. Yeah, I think it's it always confuses me too because the map that we have on screen is not north south. Well, we are we are kind of we are going along it because you can see where Atalanta is. Atalanta is like right on it, like right to the left of it. Yeah. Well, because I'm backing up and going down the slope, so. So. Yeah, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, upslope is definitely that way. Right, yeah. Uh oh. So Do we, we were talking about cutting the, yeah, cutting the difference. <laughs> so you were going towards your goal. Yeah. And that's not yeah. working out. Like if you want to stay on the top. Yeah. Up, so if you cut halfway. All right, well, you just got to come up. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Do we want to go straight up then? Well, we were talking about cutting the difference, so yeah, I'm just saying straight, more like yeah. we should go over here. Yeah. Then okay. Just if you want to stay on the yeah, top. No. Yeah. Yeah, let's try this. Yeah, you got, because we only have a six meter delta. You can come up a lot. You can come up fast. Yeah, I can, I'll come up fast though. Okay, so I got us then coming across this way a little bit. So yeah. we'll just have to pull up. <coughs> I as think we that'll go. be okay. 
All right. Awesome. Thanks for that, that work, y'all. Yeah. Hopefully we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I would not. <laughs> just let you know. This is that I'm, dungeon stuff. I'm, just yeah. like, I'm confused because the map that I see looks very is not north south. And I'm like, oh, I have no idea where I am now. <laughs> this, one, this one factor is in the wrong direction. The no. planet's upside down again. It is upside down. <laughs> so I don't again. know how y'all do it, but thank you. Oh, I, yeah, it. It, I mean, Atlanta Cam makes it look like it's really close to the uh, crest. I, I could be yeah. wrong about that, but just kind of looking at uh, the, some of the, the substrate. Sonar? Um, not on the sonar. I was looking at the the image. Huh. For a minute it was, but now it's not. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's still there in the corner. It's just really murky here. Yeah, it is. It's just like off the back. Well, we're kind of far away. Yeah. yeah. Is Analeta <coughs> sonar the one on the right? It's the so one on the left. The one on the left. Yeah, and okay. they're 20 meter yeah. divisions, so Thanks. we're probably like 10 meters off the. So when you get okay. the sharp pink return there with with shadow behind it, it mm -hmm. means like we're on the wall, right? And that you can't see over it. Understood. <coughs> okay, so and it's got like a 12 degree beam or so. So. Okay. That helps. Thank you. Yeah. So if you <laughs> just see a sharp line, then we're on the face, you know, not at the top. If you see more blue background, then we're looking over the top somewhat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Robert's uh, painting a picture of what we're looking at when we look at our sonar monitors from both ROVs and working together with, the, with Zach and Catalina to make sure we're in the best position for continuing to move up towards waypoint three. This is... Yeah, the Doppler's going to drop in now because we're yeah. on this wall. So. Yeah. <coughs> this is, what did we say, dive number nine? Dive number nine. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, on Woolard Seamount in Papahanaumokuakea. This is Ala Amoana Kaiuli, Path of the Deep Sea Travelers. Thank you for joining us, fellow deep sea travelers. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna start coming up again. Okay. This is the eight to 12 watch coming up again. So it does look like the rocks might have changed, or is this just the amount of sediment sedimentation that we're seeing? Well, we came different? down quite a ways, so I think it looked like there was a, a shelf there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's a little more sediment over here too. Uh, just been trying to decide uh, these are uh, dikes or lava flows, and I'm kind of leaning came toward down lava like flows. 60, oh. 70 meters, I think, from where we were. Okay. So is there anything that this would be telling you that there were like, you know, the lit, that these, that these layers, um, these layers of rocks, or uh, were you thinking? Um, yeah, it looks like we're kind of seeing a, a, a sequence of uh, lava flows uh, stacked on top of each other. Interesting. Because I'm not seeing a lot of evidence for um, like cross cutting, like I would expect with a with a dike intrusion. Mm. So that has me leaning at the moment toward lava flows, but it's it, it's always a little difficult to to be absolutely sure unless you kind of you know you go walk the whole area which um, obviously we can't do right right would be tough would be tough yeah i mean you could do it with an rov but that's a lot of time and there's uh there's so many other things to see yes yeah we uh, most of our dive plans are a few kilometers but the seamounts that we're traveling over are what um Tens of kilometers across. Yeah, tens of kilometers. I was going to look at the scale. Yeah, and we, we try to pick our dive sites uh, in order to maximize all of the different kinds of science and yeah. surveying we can do. So we're Using not going to get all the details or mm -hmm. all the interpretations. So uh, we just do the best we can. And, uh, you know, um, uh, record and try to interpret with caution um, everything that we can see. Yes. 
So, so that's why I say I don't know to uh, a lot of things because, you know, often, you know, there are times where I'll just need more information to answer a question completely. Um, I, I try not to, like, you know, I over interpret I what I'm looking come at. Up and you can mm -hmm. come up and get off the wall. Yep. But over time, the more dives you see, the more you learn, the more information gets in your head, and the more you can start to kind of figure out some of these interpretations at a, like a broader uh, scale with regard to uh, uh, seamount structures, uh, origins, formations. It's a yeah. cool pattern there we're seeing in the, in the rocks mm -hmm. as we come back up towards the ridge. Yeah. yeah. The Atalanticam is really cool too right now. There's a yeah. dragon's mm -hmm. skeleton there. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. right. <laughs> Been looking for that one. Internet, go crazy. Yeah, well, they, I saw that they had some <laughs> dumb thing about dragon's <laughs> skeleton. <laughs> yep. Zach, I'd love this to know. This is not a dragon oh, skeleton. This is not. No, oh, we're clarifying. <laughs> Robert doesn't actually believe that's a dragon skeleton. <laughs> Mythical dragon skeleton that will rise again from the seamount to take over the world. Nope, not happening. But Zach, I'd love to know what your story with getting into ROV piloting. Uh, we've, we've enjoyed putting you in the, seeing you in the Herc seat and uh, been doing a great job on Atalanta, but... Uh, How'd you, how'd you get into the field? Um, I, before I started ROV, I was doing plumbing for, I've, 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 my family is a whole bunch of plumbers, so you know, I've been doing that for a few years, and you know, uh, I had a friend that was a mechanic and worked on some heavy equipment, so he got me into hydraulics a little bit, and I was like, okay, cool, you know. And then a little after that, um, you know, I saw that uh, a certain company was hiring, and uh, you know they were doing mass hirings, and it, it was it was cool. You know, I got to go to the, the, their little schooling and everything, and I did that for a few years with them, and uh, I didn't really have too many great mentors, so it was kind of kind of like I had to like self teach myself all that stuff, mm -hmm. um, and you know I didn't. It was always kind of like. I shouldn't say a hindrance, but it was always kind of like a challenge to just like, you know, teach myself certain things or, you know, read about it. And, you know, and for me, I'm really ADHD, so it's kind of hard for me to sit there and concentrate on something, especially, you know, when I'm just like, I got so many things going on at one time. So it's like, it's really hard for me to sit down and kind of just focus on one thing unless I'm like really into it. And so I kind of like forced myself to get into it and <laughs> just started self-teaching myself. And then it wasn't really until I got to another company that, you know, it's all oil and gas, by the way, none of it's research. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't have a degree or anything like that. And actually, I'm going to school, going back to school, because I dropped out because of work, um, working offshore. And I'm going back to school for my marine biology degree, just just to finish it. I, have, I literally have two years left, so I was like, man, Oh, well. that's awesome. Yeah, so, nice. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, when I went to another company, uh, that's when I kind of like actually started kind of excelling because I had a really, really good mentor. His name was Justin Buckler. I don't know if he, if he, if he ever hears this, but, man, you, you kind of inspired me a little bit. But I hope that you can hear this one day. <laughs> yeah, it's important for our mentors to know. That's, uh, that's an awesome, yeah. awesome tribute and an important just highlight for those listening. We, we really do need depend on those mentors in our lives who can come and yep. kind of teach us by doing life. and yeah that's right yeah, Dr. Val that knows was that. a big thing with me too is the mentors yep there's a couple of couple of engineers that really brought me along you know they mm -hmm. got me in the R&D I was just working a production line doing a I was tuning command destruct receivers for cruise missiles wow wow they yeah. brought me in the R&D department for space products. I was in a, working in a clean room. That was cool. <laughs> <laughs> All sorts of stuff you can do in a, in a clean room. It is cool, yeah. yeah. It is cool. I spent a lot you of time You get to wear a special rooms. suit. Yeah. Yep. I was working on radios that went the satellites. Wow. Oh, wow. You know, I love that and, and uh, just want to just wanna say it's so important let our mentors know it might might feel embarrassing but don't be too proud or shy that they um they mean so much to us i know i try to make it a point to let my teachers know how much i appreciate them and 
value all the time they put in, even when they don't have to, and just all the care they give and instruction. So fine, go, go find one of your mentors today if you're listening in. Uh, send them a note, um, touch base with them, just, just say thank you. That was a great tribute, Zach, and Robert, you too. Mine are no longer around. <laughs> well, that's that is what happens, and all the more all the more reason why to let them know now. We we never know, never know. So uh, yeah, that, then then we then then you become the mentor. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and that's a beautiful cycle. That's how our teachers live on. We certainly know that from. I know Mahina and I know that from our voyaging practice. It's always so wonderful to hear about our teachers' teachers. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. It's also astonishing. I mean, it's kind of surprising when our teachers, who we hold in such a high light, um, they speak of them, their like journey of being a student. I think it's sometimes hard to imagine because they've acquired all of this knowledge in their lifetime, and we've. I mean, I've only stepped in and they've always been a mentor or teacher of Kumu to me. And just to think that they are willing to share their you know, sh failure struggles as a student with you. And it's just so hard to imagine that this like uh, person who's so accomplished, uh, so successful at what they do, so skillful, were once, you know, in the shoes that you're in. That's right. So I think just for them to be able to have that humility and have that vulnerability with their homewana, with their students is astonishing. And like you mentioned the other day, Daniel, is that when the student is ready, the teacher will arrive. Mm. It's and true. That's a beautiful, it's such a beautiful, like, manao, it's such a beautiful thought. It is. The truth, there's so much truth to that, too. Oh, mahalo mahina, I love that. And, and it's one of my favorite things in the world to watch learners learning from, from their teachers and just uh, um, envisioning and imagining the future that, that uh, those learners are going to have when they'll embody all of the knowledge, all of the skill, all of the wisdom of their, of their teachers. And, and I can see it, see it in many of, the, many of us in the control van, many of the people on board the Nautilus. I know it's true of many of you listening, so... Uh, we're on the path, the deep sea traveler's path, mm -hmm. the learner's path. It's, uh, it's awesome. One of the technicians that was coming up along with me had the same mentors. And he's retiring right now as a director of engineering at Qualcomm. Qualcomm, wow, wow that's, yeah, a that's a big awesome. job. Well, that's Speaks over 45 years. But <laughs> Amazing. I know um, Robert Perkins at the Marine Education Training Center back at, back at home. He was a great mentor. I took a few of his uh, classes that were offered at the METC, the Marine Education Training Center. He had a great uh, small vessel uh, fabrication and repair course, and I took the fiberglass one the composites class and that was so much fun. Oh, we got wow. to, we, our class made a uh, opelu four-man <laughs> canoe and laid out all the fiberglass. I mean, the course was over, you know, like six months, but every Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday evening. And he was also the one, you know, who would always say, you guys have to learn this. So when I'm not around, at least someone knows how to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and at the same time, whenever he would say that half jokingly, I would be so sad to think that like there would be a day where this he's not like going to be, maybe? you know, just Possibly. upstairs in one of the yeah. bays or, yeah. and he actually retired this past April. That was a great pain. That was a great party yeah. for Captain Bob. Yeah, a great captain, a great mentor, a great teacher for Polynesian Voyaging Society. And he's just contributed so much. I mean, just a wealth of knowledge when it comes to engineering, mechanics, um, elect electronics all of the above so he takes in so many of us who have uh limited knowledge in these areas and and really helps expose us to uh the inner workings of boat building electronics all yeah. the all the production manufacturing engineering side of uh of what we do and amazing mm -hmm. to see that blended with the traditional knowledge of, of uh construction and yeah. yeah he captain bob's a real gift we trying to get uh lots more stuff here. 
Looks like it, yeah. I think we're getting close to the top. I, you can I think see a so. lot more over the edge here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're starting to see the communities uh, picking up again, so that's that's usually that's a, a good, good sign. sign. That release is tight. I think you're on mute. Yeah, on the topic of mentors, um, my PhD advisor, Jasper Connor, was uh, one of the most influential people in uh, my academic development. Uh, I was a student with him for. Uh, six years and his first PhD student. Uh, he's uh, He had a few master students uh, before then, but uh, yeah, I was the first PhD student and he's the one who kind of kick-started my, uh, my passion for this kind of work. I love it. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately we uh, lost him very tragically uh, last summer. So I'm trying to do everything I can to keep that legacy alive. Keep his research going, um, along with uh, some of my other colleagues and his uh, uh, and uh, one of his students who's currently a PhD student uh, over at University of Hawaii. So you know, we're all trying to keep his memory alive that way. He's a wonderful guy. Out here in the realm of ancestors, I know he's very proud, and you are doing an outstanding job carrying that legacy on, Dr. Val. Privileged to be next to all of you, and. Uh, by proxy, all of your mentors, all of your teachers, it's such a gift of making new friends and, and getting to see all of their ancestors, all of their teachers represented in who they are. And there's been a lot of great ones that are filling this control van right now. So, mm -hmm. yeah, outstanding. We're definitely a continuum of that. So. We are, yeah. I never expected to have to take on that legacy uh, this early yeah, in so my career, too but soon. Uh, yeah, it was way too soon. But um, yeah, I, I I miss him every day, and I, I thank him for every everything he's taught me, mm. and all of the all of the good he's done in numerous people's lives. So that's that's what a good mentor does. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mahalo, Val, for sharing that. Are we good on this one? I, I think you're on mute, Virginia. I hit it. Okay. I was like, no, I did. Really? I touched it, but I didn't actually turn the unmute off. No, not, not you, Bob. <laughs> oh, I wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was me again. <laughs> um, I still can't tell where it's branching from, where the, but it is a. It, yeah. That's been a great zoom. So okay. much appreciated. Has a Moving large on. bamboo, actually. For all of those tuning in, we'd love to know who your mentors are, who your teachers are. Watching on Nautilus Live, you can drop those in the chat, and uh, certainly won't be able to get to all of them live on SPL, but uh, we will be able to see them and it informs the work we're doing. So we appreciate you sharing that with us. All the deep sea travelers. Mm -hmm. We are still making our way slowly up to waypoint three, kind of navigating this uh, tricky little ridge. But so far doing it with grace, hasn't been any clanking around down there at 2,000 meters. ROVs are safe and well positioned. And Do you want me to get um, the, mo the boat to move a little quicker? Is this feeling yeah, a little slow? Yeah, it's kind of pokey. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> now that it's evened out. So. <laughs> Uh, oops, but point .3 knots oh, squared. Yeah. Point right. .3 sounds pretty good. <laughs> okay. Bridge now. Could we uh, continue tracking the line at 190? Um, actually, sorry. Uh, Sorry, hold on. Let me let me re assess that. 
Could we track a line at 160 um, at 0 0.3 knots? One of the amazing things about Nautilus is that so many of our teachers and mentors might not be coming to sea with us anymore, but still part of the community. Um, we value those scientists, those experts, those explorers, those deep sea travelers who are um, dedicated members of our course, course of exploration and uh, continue to, to guide us, um, even if it's from shore. It's amazing the, the power of telepresence allows us to be so connected with, with teachers and mentors throughout throughout the world contributing to this exploration so yeah science is never really a solo activity we always we always need that team with the different skills different expertises that uh, all help us get it done otherwise you know it's just too much for one person way too much and I uh, love having all the kids joining us as fellow deep sea travelers and, and mentors in many ways those ship-to-shore interactions with classrooms from around the world. Uh, I know they not only lift our spirits, but inform the way we look at the deep sea, um, mm -hmm. bring an excitement and energy back into it that's incredibly valuable and uplifting, especially we're entering our third week and, you know, it's yeah. the third week. So, hey, we're, we need those that positive that positive yeah. energy and vibes from all it's of our young well explorers. Done. Yeah, because some, you know, the, there are uh, there are an next generation of researchers, engineers, you know, leaders, policy ship captains, makers. artists. Yeah. yeah. They, they determine our future, and we it's our kuleana to really help facilitate their curiosity, to be great mentors to them, to share our ike, our stories, our moolala with them. Mm -hmm. Hope to inspire some some adventure. The enthusiasm they bring in many of the ship to shores is unmatched, so. Oh yeah. I did one yesterday with a uh, class of uh, second graders oh, in Guam, and they were so excited. <laughs> yeah. Especially when we, when we talked about the volcano a little uh -huh. bit. Like, there's a volcano underwater? They yeah. love volcanoes. Yeah, it was so cool. You'd be hard pressed to find a second grader anywhere in the world, a seven or eight year old who wasn't just stoked on volcanoes. Yeah. <laughs> Kids know how the earth is made. They, they want they to be what's connected up. to it. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Carola from Germany wants all of us to know um, that didn't know a thing about the deep sea before started diving with Nautilus and uh, thinks of all of you as mentors as well. Thank you very much. And I, I concur. I agree. Control van filled yeah, with mentors. I, I got to say, too, um, it, it was Jasper who uh, got me... Uh, hooked up with the uh, Ocean Exploration Trust. Wow. So, Amber Zoom. Uh, he he uh, suggested me for uh, a cruise. They had, I believe they had asked him to join. Um, he couldn't do it because uh, he'd already been out at sea once uh, last year, uh, right at the very beginning of the year, and uh, couldn't quite take the time off from work. So he uh, gave them my name, and uh, they reached out. And I went on uh, NA-138 and had a wonderful time. <laughs> and then OET uh, was uh, kind enough to ask me back for this one, and I was able to do it. So we're very it's glad. Hi, it's his that. fault. You guys have to deal with this. <laughs> 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 oh, 
sometimes teachers know things that they don't even know that they know. Yep. And they just, uh, they provide us with opportunities and gifts and uh, they may, they might not know exactly how they're impacting us all the time, but uh, it works think, out. You know, they provide so much encouragement too and um, they have so much belief in their students. Sometimes we don't even have that same belief in ourselves. And when an opportunity mm -hmm. does arise and it seems nerve wracking and we don't believe that, you know, we are capable of it, they're the ones that are pushing us forward into it, pushing us into the fire, pushing us into the growth, the learning. Um, and I have had those mentors in various parts of my life and when I was uncertain or faced self doubt and they just kept pushing me forward. Mm. And it has helped me to reach greater heights that I didn't see myself capable of. Oh, that's awesome. Sounds like you and I have traveled a similar path in that respect. <laughs> you know, there, there have been, there's been more than one point during my graduate studies where, you know, uh, the imposter syndrome kicked in really badly and I'm like, I don't deserve to be here. You know, I, I don't feel like I'm doing this right or, you know, just get so frustrated with something not working. Yeah. yeah. You start to question it. And sometimes you need you need to go talk to that, that mentor, that advisor, that teacher, and just uh, share those perspectives. And often they have advice that uh, just kind of makes you sit back and think about things from another angle and uh, you, you start to believe in yourself again. Yeah. You know, sometimes... We all need that. Sometimes I think it's the advice and sometimes I think at least with my mentors, it's just the example that they set by always learning, by always being humble, by continuing to take in, you know, imiike. You know, we have our Captain Bruce Blankenfeld who seems to know so much, but yeah. just loves yeah. to continue learning. Yeah. And, uh, I always really appreciate that because it reminds okay. me that no matter where I am, no matter what I'm stuck in, there's always room to grow, there's room to expand, there's room to, to become new things. And uh, that lesson I mean, is best like learned through example. It comes out more to the east. Yeah. Go south. Yeah, that's why I had pulled us this way, but I feel like it's yeah. just going to take you We're off the wall. Her. So. Right. Front row team making it happen, finding our way on this tricky little seamount ridge. Not gonna lie, I like getting lost with y'all. It's fun. <laughs> Lost. I mean, yeah, I mean, we I mean, just don't I know where we are. <laughs> <laughs> We're exploring. Taking <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the scenery. <laughs> lost or found, I love it. Doesn't hey, matter. I like the scenery. It's true. It's, it's beautiful. beautiful. It is. Is this another uh, cross section uh, looking into the a volcanic plumbing system? Or? I think so. I think we're looking at a cross section right now of uh, some uh, lava flows, maybe some pillow or lobate flows that are stacked on top of each other. Maybe a couple of small dikes cutting through, but I'm not quite as sure. But that might be a cross cutting dike right there that that sponge is hanging out on. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah, we just had um, a Sako uh, just supported a potential ID for some of these sponges and um, Looking at them, I do I do agree that they are um, uh, potentially um, wait where did it go uh, hyalonema, which was within the Amphidiscosida uh, group of sponge of glass sponges. And, um, these definitely do look very visibly similar to that. Um, but I do know that you know, we can't we're having a hard time seeing the bases. So, uh, but yeah, no, it's pretty interesting pretty interesting. We, we're seeing a, a different types, some different sponges and corals than we've seen um, elsewhere zoom too. Did you ask for a zoom? Yes. yes. Okay. We have a few minutes here we can look at some sponges. Mm -hmm. Speaking of sponges, uh, Christopher Klaus, Mr. Klaus and his uh, robotics team uh, tuning in from Marlborough School in New Hampshire, the oh, fellow wow. uh, science communication fellow and an absolute mentor, um, besides being a robotics teacher. Um, and you, you might have noticed if you follow Nautilus on social media, um, Christopher doing American Sign Language, uh, sharing the story of deep sea exploration in ASL, such a gift. And uh, 
When he's not signing, or probably sometimes while he's signing, he's also dropping slam poetry. Incredible slam poetry. He is very <laughs> talented. His poetry is amazing. Yeah. That's so good, yeah. I didn't yeah. think of myself as a, as a poetry person, but... Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome for the sponge. If you can zoom out, I think there was another sponge nearby that would be interesting yep. to zoom on. Thank you. He is, uh, he is an absolute wow. gift of a human being, and I'm sure his students mm -hmm. are as well, and we're glad you're tuning in. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, sponge here, actually. He, he did yeah. send a shout-out to Val. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see that. the geology Thanks, tour. Chris. Yeah, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I really enjoyed the, uh, uh, the word of the day that you were doing on that the last awesome. cruise. That was awesome. Yeah, you're doing these little daily posts of uh, uh, sign language words in uh, uh, different parts of the ship. Well, I love it. This planet's for everybody. The deep sea's for everyone. And uh, I love all the ways that uh, Ocean Exploration Trust and Nautilus are breaking down barriers so more and more friends can become deep sea travelers with us. Yeah, Chris and I hung out a little bit at the uh, season kickoff in Rhode Island earlier this year. And yeah, it's had right. a really good time. Yeah, it's good to see everybody again. Oh, Christopher uh, looked me straight in the eye, said, "I can make you cry in uh, in under two minutes," <laughs> and uh, he dropped one of his poems on us, and I was crying in two seconds. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah. He was a six foot eight, two hundred and sixty pound man, just bawling. <laughs> that was fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, I look we were, forward to the next time. We were on watch. Uh, Chris is on my watch on 138, right. and uh, you know we, we were pretty awesome. decent ways Thank into the cruise, that. and that was the night that we found out that uh, he wrote poetry, and we got him. <laughs> we, we talked him into reading, reading some of it uh, live, and just all of us in the control van were just floored. Oh, I love it. <laughs> he is. Uh, he is great. Yeah, he sneaks it in on you. You don't you don't suspect it. He's uh, one of the most humble people I've met, um, especially given how talented. Uh, yeah. Look forward to the next time we get to hang out. Same. Oh yeah, looks like there's a couple small Walteria Ooh, sponges. Baby Walteria. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty interesting, along with this. Um, I'm thinking you it sponge, but I'm not sure. Kind of in the rope here. Okay. Cool. All right. Thank you for those zooms. I feel like this is the ridge that never ends. <laughs> There's no top to this ridge. <laughs> it's amazing. I think somebody divided by zero. <laughs> Infinite yeah, ridge. <laughs> oh yeah, another cross-cutting dike right there. Yeah, so that's that's almost certainly a lava sequence that we're seeing where all those beds are, all those planes are aligned with each on other, and then you see one that just, like, yeah. cuts through. Yeah. Yeah. Nope, nope, that's a big pillow of basalt right there. If you're watching from home, there's an or orientation of many lines going in one direction that Dr. Val is pointing out, and then we'll have a, a section that comes through in the opposite orientation or perpendicular yeah. orientation yeah. sometimes. So and yeah. Evidence of an intrusion. A, a lava dike. Is that right? Lava? Yep. Um, yeah. yeah, just dike. Just uh, dike. Yeah. No so, uh, fun fact uh, for the audience: um, if a melt is unerupted, it's a magma. If it's erupted, it's a lava. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. It's a good distinction. Yeah, we still use lava lava. lava type rock classifications for uh, dikes frequently. Um, it's. It's a thing. Yeah, we're starting to jet <laughs> out more to the east here. Do you want me to change the change the yeah, bearing? Now so we we're might, kind yeah, of now we might need to. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bridge now. Yeah, I'm coming up. Yeah, I'll come up with you. Could we please change uh, the bearing to one three zero?
Thank you. Just amazing ridge and wall features that uh, don't. Well, it you might know, just be like a nose sticking out. Yeah, there, so. yeah. No, it looks like we've got a bunch of corals over there. Too much or to sponges that. over to the left of us too. Yeah, nice yeah. Right back. Interesting. Looks like a polyopicon up there, or another euplectilid at least. We uh, zoom in. Um, Yeah, this one looks different than the polyopagons that we've been seeing. Oh, yeah. Oh, Sako agrees that it is a polyopagon. It's so oh. tiny. Yeah, it's a small polyopagon. Well done, Kukui. Oh, thank you. Kukui knows her sponges. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, thank you for that zoom. Mahalo Nui. A light in the dark depths of the ocean. Mm. Kukui. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I told you guys. Nice try. <laughs> Compliment fight. <laughs> you and Mahina Lani, Catalina Del Mar, Virginia Val, Zach, Amber, even Aquaman himself. <laughs> that's you know that's coming from someone who could be a stunt double for Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> I got a ways to go to get back in shape to, to be Jason's uh, stunt double. But Jason, if you're listening, I'm open. I'm, uh, I'm available after this cruise, so happy to put in the time in the gym if uh, I get to be get to be Jay's stunt double. <laughs> And you're right. I'm just the right amount of smart to be somebody's stunt double and take all the take all the hits for him. Oh no! That's right. I love it. I came out quick. I'm going up quicker. Yeah. Oh wow. Jeez. I got a yeah. lot of sponges. <laughs> on I'm right on it. Yeah, we're yeah. pulling away now, so hopefully you'll. Oh Ooh. yeah, that's a nice view of it. Oh, it is. Yeah. It's nice. Up close and personal view. Can't always tell the sponges in Atalanta, but I think uh, we got some Maltese <laughs> sponges, some French bamboo. Oh, you can come up and from yeah, I'm going out too. Yeah. <laughs> Making me oh, there's nervous. There's a whole in Atalanta. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm nervous. laughs> oh, boy. Just kidding. I love it. You can get closer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tempt them. <laughs> Incredible ridge well, lines. Atlanta is set down on the bottom before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice Part of the reason it's built is sturdy. Yeah, I was going to say, definitely, <laughs> yeah. Steel cage. Jeez. A little toe sled that could. <laughs> this really, I really wish we could see this mountain in, in its entirety. I feel like uh, oh, last I summer I, I was up in Denali National oh, Park better. and Spent a week in, in that incredible place, but didn't see the Denali summit the whole time until we drove out of the park and started heading back south towards Anchorage. Those people who uh, who know that part of the world, the Alaska Range, uh, will understand this well, but you don't get that many clear blue sky days in that part of Alaska. And when we came around the Alaska Range, I thought Denali was just going to land on our heads, the whole massive summit and clear view, uh, blue sky mm -hmm. day. And I just imagine this mountain might have a similar effect in such a such a dramatic just from this little pinprick of light that we have on it just such an incredible place so okay i think we're okay now we'd love to see it catch the bus in <laughs> yeah, yeah i love it maybe in extended reality we can start bringing yeah. some of these uh we can start bringing some of these sea mounts to life in ways that we can visualize them as if they were above uh above the have surface of the this, ocean. The series where they take the ocean away. With the yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, oh, that's that? that's a really great. Yeah. I'm sorry. What? Uh, okay. Yeah. It's a Nat Geo show yes. called Drain the Oceans. It's really cool. Yes. And Hans was on an episode that I watched. What? Yes. Oh. Wait, which episode? Oh. Uh, one about Pearl Harbor and. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. He's yeah. Famous. It was Hans. It was like right at the beginning of the cruise. He he showed up and I was like, wait. He's here. I know, I know him. Him. <laughs> You're a star, huh? 
and she also is so humble. That. You would never know. Hans would never oh give God. it away. He's so chill. Oh. I, we, this is a cool that's a, I have yeah. not seen it. it Drain the ocean. Uh, Disney yeah. Plus? Yeah, it's cool. It Disney is. Plus, Nat, they have Nat Geo. There's actually one episode that I really enjoyed about San Francisco Bay. And they drain oh, it out, and then one, you yeah. can kind of see, they explain more of like the currents within that area. Oh, wow. And That's cool. uh, I was just like, wow, it's it so fascinating. Really like cool. all the water, like the force of water gushing in there, and it swirls around, and then it just like pulls back out. I got to talk to them about who did that. I want to work with those folks. It's, it's a, really cool. That's pretty cool. I got to watch this show. Yeah. Yeah. There's a whole world under those oceans. Uh huh, yeah. And they speak a lot, yeah, about the geological features of like all of those places, coves, bays. Oh, that's so like, cool. It's, yeah. Mike yeah. said that I think he's also in an episode. Wow. Uh, at Bikini Atoll. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, cool. I think so, yeah. All right, we got to look for our friends. We joke about uh -huh. being the greatest, uh, I mean, we don't really joke. It's pretty much true, the greatest <laughs> bunch of all time. But uh, we have so much love for all of our shipmates, uh, all of the watches yeah. here, just this whole this whole uh, crew, I, it's in, actually still blowing my mind that they pull this crew together and people from all over the country, the world, so many different backgrounds. Many of us had never met Ooh. before, mm -hmm. and uh, but it's just a beautiful, Ooh, beautiful tight. team. I ain't getting shallow again. Yeah. Too far away. So I, I dove on the Hess Deep, and I don't know the, the actual dimensions there but it like dwarfs the, the Grand Canyon. I've heard, yeah. I've heard it would swallow the Grand Canyon multiple times. Yeah. yeah. You dove in Alvin? Yeah. Oh wow, wow Robert, that's pretty How awesome. How that feel? Just like the walls are around you. It's just a wall forever and <laughs> yeah. ever, ever. Wow. <laughs> it's like this. Yeah. Yeah. Forever. Does it, do they have that on the ep on the Nat Geo show on, on Drain the Oceans? I want to see Hess Deep on Drain the Oceans. Nat Geo if you're listening. I imagine they do. It. They should. I mean, that's one of the... It's the largest canyon on Earth. Yeah. That we know of. There's some overhangs in that, too. Is he gonna Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. That's a little terrifying. <laughs> All right, if you're just joining us, we are on uh, diving on Woolard Seamount, uh, the Northwest Hawaiian Ridge area. We are currently uh, trying to find the top of this ridge, which uh, we have not succeeded in doing just yet. <laughs> um, and we're uh, getting we're close, actually so. pretty close to waypoint <laughs> three. <laughs> yeah. Zigzagging you can't see some there. blue over the top there. Yeah, you can. Uh, uh, far away. <laughs> <laughs> Until I see absolute proof, I, d I, I am, remain unconvinced that this ridge actually has a crest. <laughs> we want a visual, visual confirmation. <laughs> this is a never-ending seamount. Maybe we can get up there. Come on up. <laughs> oh, our scientist ashore, Chris Kelly, on Drain the Oceans as well. Not surprising, but wow. uh, yeah, and look at this. Nautilus just basically casting the whole show. Yeah. That's, that's nice. <laughs> <about it. laughs> Maybe marine, we're next. What can I? I'll, the uh, Marine Expedition Community, yeah, there's another dike, uh, isn't like, that's not huge. A lot of us know each other. <laughs> does, does the show need any stunt doubles? I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. Might be overhang on you. I'm not sure. Yeah, they, they should get a. They should get all the Aquamen, both Robert and Jason Momoa. <laughs> <laughs> then they'll definitely need you as a stunt double. <laughs> there we go. Oh, wow. Okay. Or, is this Ooh. the top? Yeah. Oh. Hey, you yeah. made it. <laughs> it does end. Oh, this is Life on the top of the ridge. Let me tag this one. Oh, that's get cool. Zoom on this. this one's yeah, going to be titled nice. We Made yeah. It. <laughs> we Made the Crest. <laughs> Bridge Crest or Bust. Beautiful. Excellent. Is that huh. sponge? Oh, that's I cool. believe it is a sponge. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Not the happiest looking sponge. Oh, that's not too bad. But yeah. I, I actually, um, I think the other side might look better. Um, Got some squat wow. lobsters. Yeah. A couple of them. A couple different types, too. Um, yeah. It's pretty interesting. And you can see the sponge ground behind it. And, um, I bet you've 
I think that's probably another one of those um, branch bamboos behind it. And there's some ulterior sponges around here. And and stop and smell the roses? Yeah, sure. it actually would be really great. <laughs> stop smelling <laughs> roses. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Oh wow, it's uh, a yeah. dense. Hey, it's pretty look at that. cool. Oh, we got another polyopagon over there. Yeah, that? that is wow. enormous. Yes. Life on the top. I could live in that. <laughs> hmm. Asako says that that uh, a sponge was a. Oh, no, I'm not sure. So we're. Feeling some current up here. Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> it's ripping right up this ridge. I'm gonna carry us to the top. Yeah, I thought I was seeing a little bit of current from the marine snow kind of moving horizontally across the camera. Yeah, a little earlier. Is, we came over the crest here and started. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, interesting. Away. Okay. So I'm having to drive really hard to get. Over okay. Here. Okay. Is it gonna be easier to kind of sit just below the ridge crest for some maneuvers? Yeah, possibly. Okay. All right, I mean, we'll I do what we need to do. If we keep going the way we're going, we're going to be going with the current, so maybe we can. Let's okay. Go. So bad. Awesome. I think if we were trying to go into it, it would be difficult. Yeah. yeah. Cool beans. I'm looking at. Uh, looks like the that sponge with that interesting fan shape was uh, Tetrapleura um, within the Unceratidae. Um, we've got a polyopagon in front of us, some, looks like maybe some more of those uh, unbranched primnoids, potentially some unbranched branch bamboos, ulterior sponges, ulterior, yeah. uh, looks like some bolosomas. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed there was a branched bamboo, planar branch bamboo that's as it. well. That's all your leash. Some yeah. crinoids all on right, top of here. So. Awesome, okay. thank you. Yeah, Carry no, this on. is fantastic. This is a great... A great There's view so of many Walteria up here. So are we still yeah. tracking? No, we no we're not. We I put it, told him to hold for now. Okay. Yeah, some sparsely branched bamboos there. Wow. Oh hello rock. Yes. Oh wow, this is wow. a high density of Alterios at the top of this. Very, very, yeah. very large. Is this um, an outcrop or is this just a, yeah. is this a difference in weathering? Like how, how do we get such a high feature here? Oh, um, this is, this is outcropping rock. This looks like your Mokupuni. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, aw, I don't know my Moi no koi. Moi no koi. From a different angle, but. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we had Haleakala, yeah. West Maui Mountains. Yeah. Yeah, it just looks like some pieces of uh, lava flow that. Um, just sitting on top of this ridge here. Um, it's. Uh, it looks like there is a lot of evidence for uh, um, collapses or uh, uh, faulting here. So um, that's that's just some stuff. It's pieces of uh, an old lava flow that stayed on top of the ridge. Uh, and perhaps not all of it's uh, stayed in the same place. So its counterparts might be at the bottom of the canyon. But um, yeah. A nice little Chrysoporcia in front of us as well. Yeah. Little baby. A little bit of on top. top. Yeah. Does that bacteria have 
barnacles? Looks like some barnacles on top ears. of that. <laughs> it does um, look like ears. Bunny ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has bunny I ears. That's a Walteria. I think that might be a, a small oh. branch coral. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, great. Thank you for that zoom. There's some nice rocks here. Many uh, viewers online noting the sure sound that we've come across an abundance of life here on this ridge. It's the sound of kukui. <laughs> Logging <laughs> all Sorry. of our data. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're you know, right. uh, do not it? apologize, Oops. kukui. You're doing <laughs> a great job. job. You're doing great. We love it. Oh, thank you. It's uh, music to our ears to see this abundance of life. So many sponges and corals and yeah, the last yeah. times have been a little quieter, so we're... Yeah, uh, looks, looks like we're getting into some different um, branching bamboos, Yeah, because we're seeing the, that we're spiral We're seeing the spiral again. at the top. Mm -hmm. <gasps> or, sorry, unbranched bamboos instead of... I said branching, but yes, we're seeing some different um, unbranched corals that look like unbranched bamboos. Um, and Along with, I think, we still have some of those unbranched primnoids as well, so. Just look at this ridge. It's, uh, can't tell the, the oh, width for sure, squat. but just super steep on both sides, dropping off. And mm -hmm. Life am, just running right along the top of it like this. I am really yeah. liking these rocks Squats. around here. Awesome. Do you think we could set up and maybe grab a rock sample? Uh, yeah, you can uh, do that. Yeah, Thank yeah, you for that. Right now, so. yeah. No, when, uh, whenever we're ready. You hear that, Robert? Uh, yeah, but I didn't hear what you said. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're not moving, so okay. yeah, if you find a good spot. This looks like a great spot. This looks like an awesome spot. It's it's been a few hundred meters since we uh, grabbed a uh, rock sample, so uh, it's about time. I'm getting a little itchy again. <laughs> what um, what's what's uh what's what about these rocks? Are you are these dike like excited bits, maybe? about? Oh uh, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, we're either in the middle of uh, uh, some some dikes that are parallel, or uh, a stack of lava flows. It's it's a honestly a little hard for me to tell which, but um, yeah, they have that nice angular look to them. It's very clearly coming off of uh, uh, the stuff that's outcropping here. Cause it doesn't really have that far to go once it breaks and falls. So uh, this gives us an excellent wish. sample opportunity. Uh. What are you thinking, Val? You see something there? Looks looks uh, tasty. Mm, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out, rocks. Rock o'clock. There you go. It's rock it is clock. always rock o'clock. <laughs> okay. It's like you're on a ledge or something. That's yeah, why you keep on falling not, off. Not great, but what do I have to do? All right. Would we be able to pan down slightly? I think you're gonna get the basket here. In just okay. A second. No worries. Thanks, Amber. Yeah. yeah. That's all the pan down you get. <laughs> Works for me. Uh, let's see. A couple of these over here look pretty good. Or we could relocate. Uh, you want to relocate and get a better toe hold? Yeah. Okay. There might be. These look kind of in place here too. Yeah. Let's let's find a better spot to park then. Oh, but then you get, then you're gonna have your, uh, your life. I think if you drop down, like right behind you a little bit, it looked flatter down there. Over here. Yeah, you'd have to drop. I'm just looking at Atlanta's camera. It looked like it might have been flat down there. Uh, maybe right. No. Oh. Yeah, right below. There's that little spot. Maybe it's not as flat as I thought. I don't have to land 
flat. I can drive into it too. So. Anything right in here, maybe? Oh, these all look great. Yeah, we've got all sorts of uh, good angular pieces that we can just pick up. A little easier than yesterday's sampling, yeah. where everything was glued down. So that looks good. That one's a little big, but it looks good. Ooh, that's a good one. Got that nice wedge shape on that guy and that one. Uh oh, you pointed at too many. Get them all. Get them all, Robert. <laughs> I'll touch it and you say yay. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever do that with that arcade game, get more than one? Did you ever, Ooh, did you ever play oh, that and get more than one? the claw one? game? <laughs> yeah, the little claw game. You got to speak up. Which one, Val? <laughs> Is, was that one stuck? The, this one? No, the one uh, next the, to it. The, to the one left. next to it, under the that left laser. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Okay. Not very big. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is a little smaller than I thought. Let's let's go a little bit bigger. What? Uh, how about this one? Can you reach that? Can you reach that? <laughs> Come Some, on. Sometimes you see stuff and it ends up being a little out of reach. Come on. It's Aquaman. Such easy grabs today. Oh, that looks nice. <laughs> Is that some of that yellow color that we're seeing on the bottom still? Or? Uh, sometimes you get that discoloration on the bottom, but uh, it looks it looks like it's a piece of one of these lava flows here. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I'm seeing what looks like some uh, uh, some typical basalt weathering where it's kind of red. Not sure what that is, but. I think that's it looks good to me. Excellent, excellent. Some sort of critter on there, the red bit. Not that red bit, but the, on the very end of it, right? Mm. Uh, here, I'll zoom in real quick. Oh, yeah. Could you zoom in on that, actually, if we're going to take it? Uh, that looks like rock. Yeah. It does look like rock. Beautiful <laughs> rock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is it, is it a keeper I take it? Uh, let's take it. It's a keeper. Looks good Wonderful. to me. Wonderful. Yeah, so I don't see any time. hyaloclastites uh, in this area, so yeah. it's, it's, all, uh, it's all good, solid basalt. <laughs> Um, you know, I was actually just realizing, I don't know if you've mentioned how, um, what you, what you do with these rocks yet in this, in this two hours we've been here. <laughs> how many hours we got? <laughs> <laughs> we have two more, so you yeah. have <laughs> <laughs> <Ample> time. <laughs> yeah, once, once we stowed the sample, I can, uh, yeah. give a little overview. Ready? Okay. Yep. All right. Where's this going? Um, you have all boxes except for a open. Okay. On the starboard side, we'll yeah. Put it B. Sounds good, thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Robert. Awesome, thank you so much. Two points. I am pleased. <laughs> <laughs> Nav, confirming this was sample 082. Got it, thank you. Thank you. Kukui and Catalina, is nope. uh, your communication around all sample numbers just for us to help geotag all of our, all of our samples? I think so, yeah, because I'm dropping little pins when we take them, so. Awesome. Yeah. It seems like there's a lot of redundancy, though, in who's recording them, which is good. That is good. Redundancy, redundancy is always good. Redundancy is a lifesaver. Mm -hmm. Well, we all, I've had this issue before where some of the um, navigation data has to be re- um, in, the, in C log is using some data from different, um, like, USBL systems, like data positions, mm -hmm. and so sometimes that gets, you have to, like, re- redo that and so some of the data gets 
um, in, in some of the systems have been um, not as accurate as, um, and I believe Catalina's system is probably far more accurate than some of these others. So gotcha. it's, always, it's always good to have these multiple backups. Definitely. Doing a little uh, pilot swap here, and then we'll we'll get flying again. Decided to continue up this ridge almost to waypoint three. Just under two hours left in the greatest watch of all time. Safety. On this ninth dive. Now that we've cleared the top, I think we should be good to start just going directly to waypoint three is my thought. Okay. If you want to just swing around this way and then once you're kind of in front, I can move this ship that way. Okay. You know, probably the hardest part about picking out rock samples in a spot like this is when they're all good, you just like hit this point where you're just like, decision paralysis. <laughs> <laughs> too many good rocks. Yeah, too much of a good thing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, Virginia was asking uh, what I actually do with these rocks. So um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm an isotope geochemist. I, I work in high temperature systems, basically volcanoes. Um, and uh, I've, I've ended up specializing over the years in seamounts like this that uh, form away from plate boundaries and uh, that we believe are generated by um, uh, upwelling mantle plumes uh, in the Earth's interior. And uh, in order, to, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in uh, uh, what kind of mantle yeah. these originate from and how they, uh, how we can use those to translate okay. uh, into bigger stories like uh, the tectonic history of the Pacific Plate. Uh, and uh, uh, what we can learn about the past, which helps us inform the present, uh, yeah, it does, like, and eventually the future. The back. Uh, so to do that, um, uh, we can look at the chemistry of the rocks in order to get information like uh, uh, specific isotopic composition, which is uh, uh, going to tell us about uh, different parts of, uh, like different kinds of mantle that can uh, be melted and contribute to uh, uh, these volcanoes. Um, and there, and there are some different types of very distinctive yeah. isotopic signatures oh, that reflect their uh, their history. Um, and uh, uh, some of the some stuff in the mantle may have once been in, uh, up on uh, Earth's surface or in the crust, and then recycled back in. Some of it has always kind of just been in the mantle, and it's never seen the surface. Yeah, so um, all of the different processes oh, that form these different reservoirs nervous. have their own uh, distinctive isotopic signatures in, in some different elements. So elements like strontium, neodymium, uh, and hafnium, and uh, lead. Uh, there, there are a bunch of others that we can look at too, but those are, those are some of the ones that I specialize in. And uh, uh, then we also have a technique that some of my uh, team members, my teammates, uh, not my team members, teammates, uh, uh, use called argon argon geochronology, which we can use to uh, figure out how old these rocks are. So, with the information of what, uh, about what kind of mantle uh, these have come from, what uh, distinct mantle flavor, if you will, and uh, that uh, absolute age that we can get from uh, the argon isotopes, um, tells us it, whether or not these seamounts are related to some of. Uh, uh, the hot spots that are actively producing uh, 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 islands and volcanoes in the uh, Polynesian Triangle south of us. Uh, you know, see if they're related and if uh, these, uh, th these mantle plumes have been around for a long time or not. Because we can use these mantle plumes then, uh, since they stay more or less fixed in Earth's mantle, we can, uh, through a combination of them and tracking them across the seafloor, 
they basically record a history of uh, the plate motion of uh, the Pacific and tells us about how uh, the ocean basin opened and uh, how it's evolved over the years, where uh, plate motion may have changed. So, Dr. Valor, can I jump in with a question on that? Sure. Because uh, these these models that are generated from the data are really interesting and can model the tectonic, the plate tectonics, and the movement of of.